if only newer traders knew how massively the odds are stacked against you. Like it's, it's I, sometimes I think about it and it's insane that anyone's profitable. Welcome back everyone to Be The Trader. Today I have a very special guest and friend and he was kind enough to invite me over. So I really appreciate Kyle. Yeah. If you don't know Kyle Williams, you need to go look him up. He's been on the show plenty of times too. So you can go watch those, those previous interviews. But today we're just gonna catch up with Kyle, see how he's been and just talk about trading. Like, Cause that's what we love to do, oh, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Thanks so, for having me on again. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, of course, it, of course. You know, everyone's probably always immediately wants to know, like, you know, how, how things have been. Like, how are things have been in terms of, you know, trading wise for you? Like, have you, have things been different because of the market? If so, how have you reacted and so forth? Yeah, so, so we had like early 2021, like the massive, I can call it a bubble if you want, like the massive, the most insane market we've ever seen, right? And it slowed down during the summertime, which is totally normal. Yep. Um, how it usually goes, at least how I've experienced it. And again, normally, whether a bubble or not, like going into end of fall and then the winter is like the time like you typically see the small cap speed up. And so going into the end of November and now being December, I was like, okay, great. Like I've survived the the, the fall months where usually my lowest yes. and toughest, specifically like August, September are always the toughest. And then I'm like, great, December's coming around. That's usually one of the best months. And I, January, February is when I like k kicks all off. Um, uh, the first two weeks of December now, I mean, I've been not brutal, but then way tougher than previous like uh, seasonality of small caps. Yeah. So, so like this week, I, I'm a red week, which is fine. Like I have numerous red weeks throughout the year. Yes. Um, rarely ever any any, or actually, at least you know, knock on wood, like four year, five years, now I haven't had a red month. But yeah. Plenty, plenty of red weeks. Um, this week's red, uh, which is fine. Yes. Um, but it's definitely not what I expected, at least yet. I mean, and again, you know, the market can turn around yes. in a day. Um, but for now, it's definitely been tougher than I, what I've seen in the previous past. So you said that like the market in August or September time period, you're mm -hmm. like, it's usually slow or just rougher markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean by that compared to when it's not slow? Um, I think, I don't know if it, I don't know. I know. I mean, how do you obviously just on the show? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if I heard him say it during your show or somewhere else, but like he's been read like every August, his entire, or August, September, like his entire career. Yes. And so he travels. I wish I had the discipline to just totally step away. Because yeah. even if I did travel, I still like look. Yeah. And I think the reason why that is in, in, in seasonality, in terms of seasonality, like it's tougher and slower because, at least from my experience, the amount of effort needed to make, let's just say $1. Like obviously we're not looking to make $1. Yeah. But the effort, the energy and effort and emotional like turmoil that it has on your like mind and body, the amount to make $1 in like the fall is like so much more than say January, February. Um, mm choppier moves, the setups you look for, at least that I look for, are not necessarily as fluid or as frequent. You know, my win rate goes down because they're not fluid as frequent, yep. more losses come around. Um, even some of the winners, like typically this week, uh, my win rate, I think is like 40 or 50%, which is lower than average, but it's not terrible. Plenty yeah, of winning traders sure. can, can win off that. Some with 20. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Um, but for me, like all my losses have been bigger than my wins this 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 week. Yeah. Not because like I'm, my risk score is off, but because just the setups I'm playing, like if I'm losing, I'm losing probably full size yep. or, or at least full loss, stop loss. And if I'm winning, I'm like, oh, maybe I made the loss back or I just, the, the play didn't work and I stopped yep. out for a smaller, smaller gain than the full gain. Um, so just stuff like that. Like there's just the... The choppiness, the the frequency of wins and losses, how the setups play out, like all of it just comes together against you in, in the falls in my experience and it's just way, way tougher, so. Hey, we wouldn't be able to do these face-to-face -face interviews if it wasn't for our sponsor, Cobra Trading. So if you can just give them a few seconds of your time, we'd really appreciate it. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing customer service. I've experienced many different brokers, and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. You said something about, it made me think about a trader I know myself. Mm -hmm. Like there's a couple, I talk to traders all the time. You know? Yeah, yeah so of it's just, I know some traders out there could be facing like something similar where they're so new at trading, right? They're only a year in, right? right. But you have how many years now? Uh, going on six, like five six and a half Six years, now, okay. Yeah. A first year trader right. has a strategy that's working mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned that there's just some months where the strategy is just not doing too well. Yeah, yeah, totally. But you know that because you've been trading for been six years, you know? 
But what about that trader who's been trading for, you know, a year, maybe two years, but they're finally finding consistency with that one strategy. Mm -hmm. And then they're hitting a wall. How, do they, how does someone decipher, like, is this a wall and this is just a cycle? Because they're new, right? right. Or they is this know. like me making X, Y, Z mistakes? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, how would, that's a hard question. Or, or, even, no, or even the scariest, or even more scariest, you're like, am I even, am I, my, does my strategy even work anymore at right. all? Right, because they're so new. Again. Um, so I, I definitely had a similar, um, the first really, really slow market I experienced was 2019. Now I started okay. trading in the middle of 2016, so I was about two and a half years in, but the way I experienced that was that in during 2016 or 2019, the whole summer, my, my favorite strategy was like dip buying, like panics, like OTC panics that go like 10, 20% in a matter of minutes. Yep. O always, usually, or not always, usually will offer like a five to 10% bounce. And I loved that strategy. Um, and that really was one of the first strategies that got me profitable. And so I was using that for the first two and a half years uh, and come summer 2019, the OTC market was just dead. Like the setup, and it, honestly, very similar right now. Like the OTC dip buy just does not exist right now. Um, okay, didn't even show up. No, doesn't okay. even occur. And I remember thinking the same thing, like I might never trade this setup again. Um, and as you know, like 2020 came around, 2021 came around, where the, literally the hottest OTC market we've ever seen. So to say like, do I know of OTC dip buy? So again, right in this period of time, OTC dip buys in December 2021, are like non-existent. Yep. And again, the newer trader might think like, oh my God, are they ever gonna right. come back? Like to your question. Right. And because I, again, because I have seen them die in 2019, come back again, you know, I have that trust of like, they'll be back. I don't know when, it, right. it, it could be scary and it could be a whole other year. Right. But the fact is they, they do, like my, again, markets are cycle, it's seasonal. We don't know how long, but we know an opportunity is around the corner. Right. Um, so I think if you're a trader struggling, and you know you don't know yep. uh, or you're, you're uncertain i would one learn to adapt right just yep. about any trader like definitely look out at other strategies try, other, strategies. Yeah. try other stuff um but don't small. maybe yeah start small, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Um, but don't start starting over you know yeah, yeah you really are yeah um but don't lose sight of the strategy you do have because it, there's always a chance it could come back like a yeah. perfect example tim Rutani was trading tickers the biggest complaint i've seen people have about it and that tim Rutani's even mentioned People are like, oh, this, this DVD seems outdated it's so long mm. ago, or the setup isn't here anymore. And I like have never subscribed to that thinking because I'm like, and what if it comes back? Yep. Like you now threw it out and people who watched it, whether it's here or not, learned it, or at least are more familiar with it and might have a better chance of Trading profiting it, it yep. when it comes back. So like that's the thing, like I don't care if it's happened in the past or it hasn't happened at all, like just learning and being prepared for it to potentially happen again is like half the battle, in my opinion. Mm. Just learning and absorbing that and being prepared for the future. So is that what you're doing? Yeah. Like, are you always like open to seeing just other ways of trading now or? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I definitely have, I think I have lacked in the sense of adapting, not adapting, I should say, learning a whole new strategy, like you said, starting yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've cultivated enough setups now to where it's, it would be pretty hard for any setup of mine to like not show up at all. Yes. Um, so in, in many ways I haven't like tried to dabble in options or right. like I haven't gone, I haven't expanded that big. Um, sometimes I do think about it, but, um, but like longing, shorting, different types of strategies. Yeah. yeah, right? yeah. Okay. I, I almost think of it as like four different like sectors of the market. There's OTC, there's listed, there's long and there's short. Many traders only do shorting. Many traders only do longing. Many traders only do OTC. Many traders only do NASDAQ. Right. I think starting out, you don't have to do everything. That's a big mistake a lot of traders make too. Like they want to do everything right away. Right. But I think as you progress and want to trade for a living and have a very like systematized strategy, learning at least a couple of those sectors. Like, so for me, I, I long and short OTCs and right. I, and I shortlist it. I don't long list it. That's like my biggest weakness. But in my opinion, I don't think you, you, ha you don't have to do all four. Right, you don't have to right. have all four programmations, but I definitely don't think you should only have, like if you only long list or you only long OTCs, you can make money, no sure. doubt about it, but just understand the, um, the seasonality, yep. the dry spells are more frequent. Um, and so I learned that. So, and that, that's when I happened in 2019, I learned that. Like I was only an OTC trader, mm -hmm. long and short. So when 2019 came around and OTCs were dead, that's when I had to learn, I need to learn listed. And that's when it got me to like kind of force myself to learn listed short selling. And from there, like mm -hmm. and for reason, like the only reason why I'm able to even survive in this market where OTCs are dead, all of my November profits are listed shorts. Pretty much all of my, I mean, all of my October, or, uh, December profits so far, as small as they are, but like their profits are listed shorts. So yep. like learning, being diversified in at least half or like a third of those four little sections, yep. I think is is huge to being, you know, sla slashing through the, the slower seasons of, of trading. So yeah, I love that you point that out, man, because I'm over here thinking like that same trader who is saying like, I don't know if this is, you know, just part of this market cycle. Mm -hmm. So things are slowing down or... 
you know, they may be thinking I'm just trading bats. They're overanalyzing their own trades. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you can kindly do that. And when you make that mistake, where, or it could also be in which you clearly point it, you just don't have enough strategies yet. Yeah. Right? Because that's so important. Like, like you don't have enough strategies to where you might see Kyle, right? Maybe trading every day, right? Mm -hmm. And then you just are just laying off the brake on certain types of trades. Yeah, yeah. Whereas someone else only has that trade. They only got that one. Right? So like, I love that you pointed that out, like, because everyone needs to understand that over time, you didn't just start out with like eight strategies. Bro. No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it just doesn't happen that way. I just, I was born like this. Like, no. this, is, uh, this is, I just got here. I just showed up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> it takes time. Totally. Totally. And that's, that's where, and that's why it is tougher as a newer trader yes. and is going through this, There's this more dry season. against you. Yeah, totally. I, I, I forget. No, I know, I know who said it. it was Michael Good who said this. I don't remember exactly how he said it, but I'll paraphrase it. It's like, if only newer traders knew how massively the odds are stacked against you. Like it's, it's, I, sometimes I think about it and it's insane that anyone's profitable. Like I really think about it, like it's, it's quite, I mean, it makes sense why people are profitable. Like it, I understand right, why. it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But then I think about it, like, man, it's like so difficult. The, the things against you when you're first starting out, it's massive. So that's why it's definitely so hard. So if you're like a new trader going through this dry season with only one setup, Yes, you should learn and adapt and, and tinker, yes, yes. but I wouldn't, it's a very thin line. Like I wouldn't fall, fall too far of like, I need to learn everything right now. You know, learn like one other setup. Don't start learning, uh, try to have this whole portfolio of like 10 different things you're trying to learn. Because again, I learned off one setup. Right. And then, then turned to two. Then it something turned to three. made you learn something else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you ran into the wall and you're like, right. right. Okay, let me pivot. And, and it's kind of like this, this like, I don't want to say like a blessing in disguise because it's like, it just, it just like everything kind of happened fluidly. I didn't try to like force anything. I didn't try to force a new setup. It's like just how my journey progressed naturally. Yeah. It naturally flowed. Like, okay, this, there's this wall. There's this, there's this obstacle, new setup. Or okay, there's this slow market, new setup. And it was like, I almost had the right amount of profits, yep. the right amount of like, I was in the right spot at the right time during my journey to make that happen. Yep. Um, so like, if you only have say a $4,000 account and you're barely making money with one setup, yes. you, unfortunately, like I said, why it's so hard, you might not, even, you might not even be able to afford to learn a new setup. Like you might literally just have to sit and wait for three months, yep. you know, but if that means you stay alive and stay in the game to trade for years to come, What's three months sacrificing break even versus nothing. trying to for yeah nothing nothing so so there's that you really have to be self aware in your situation because it's it could be so different for everybody but like you really got to look at the odds against you and where you're at and what route you should take because because not just learning more setups might not just be the answer it might you know? be the answer to get you killed yeah like, you know, exactly it literally exactly. Could destroy you right away if right. you just jump that and I love that you said that because yeah. it's like it's not just one answer. It's like, you got to kind of evaluate. You got to be honest yeah. with yourself, mm -hmm. really. And I think being honest with yourself is something that I've noticed in a lot of traders mm -hmm. that if you're not like just brutally honest, you know, oh. not brutal like you're an ass, like, you know, but like the truth, just, just yeah, totally the truth with you that you won't grow or you won't make it as a trader. No. You just won't. No. You, you'll no. be in your own way, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like there's so many, there's just like, oh, I can think of, <laughs> right? it, it, it makes me sick because I think, I think about I, I mean, I personally love like sociology and like psychology yes. outside of trading. Like I love people watching, right? Just like for fun. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I like, one of the things that like the least, the least kind of person I get along with is like people who are just straight up delusional. Like, and they don't okay. even know yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Like, and I'm not one to say like, I know what's right and wrong or, but I just like simple thing. Like two plus two is four. Yep. Right. Yep. And you could, and then you, someone will say something or do something, or maybe even trading and like this stock has to go down or this stock has to go. I'm like, Mm, yeah, no, we, we won't get along, you know, like yeah. you, you just, and even from a, like a cutting loss standpoint, like you have to be accepting that you're wrong. Like, I don't care what you the stock to. says. I don't care what I think. I don't care what, what, it, like if, if, if I have a stop loss and it's hit, I'm out. Like, it, I don't yeah. care what I think. Like it just, you have to be like, that's the brutal honesty right there. Like, yep. it just doesn't matter. Like, just get me out. It's Forget what I think. I'm relevant at this point. Yeah. Like, there's a stop loss. I need to protect what I'm, yeah, you know? Right. Yeah. I need to protect my totally. money. Exactly. Speaking of protecting, like, your money, risk management is such a topic that mm -hmm. people bring up all the time. Yeah. Like, they bring it up, but they bring it up in such a way that it's like, yeah, you, all you need is know is your stop. And I, they, they pretty much put it to that terms. Right. Risk, right. support, resistance, right? But the longer I trade personally, like, risk management is just, like, so much more than that. Sometimes I feel. Like, it's... Yeah. That's like, sure, the rules, that's really the foundation. You mm -hmm. need to have that. Like, if you do not have that, then yeah, good luck. you, yeah, it's over. Yeah. You're not going to make it. When you really start to get down on risk management over time, it's like when to size, how to size, when to make sure that 
you know, you're risking the right prop, you know, the proper right of risk for that specific setup oh, or, yeah. Oh, yeah. or in the current market condition. Like, are you being smart or are you being greedy? You mm -hmm. know, like, is there been, like, have there been some levels of risk management that really stand out, stand out to you besides like this tr standard traditional, like cut your losses? Oh yeah. Yeah. You, and you nail it on the head. It's like, and I was talking about a buddy with this of, of constant evaluation of, yes. okay, how ideal of a setup with this? What market environment are we in? Um, how emotion, how, how emotionally, how, how charged is my battery? Like right? what if I'm just getting a, like obliterated all week long and I get an ID, ideal A plus setup, can I even have the emotional capacity for that week to like, to, to take that trade? Yep. Um, cause I think people ignore that all the time of like, yeah, you can take a trade, but are you even emotionally prepared at this point moment? And, and of course people say like, oh, you shouldn't like you're in your emotions, this and that. But it's like but you, you should, need to know. Yeah, you need to know where you're at. You just have to know whether you want to That's acknowledge the honesty it or not. part. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, like when we're in this tougher market, I, it's so funny. I will, I don't, and I wish, I wish I had like a, a system to tell you of like I know exactly when this happens. Like I downsize here. Right, right. But it's it's mm. such a it's such a feel and um, arbitrary thing for me, unfortunately. Yeah. But from doing it for so long, I immediately know. Okay, there's a shift in the market. Like okay, this isn't happening, or yeah. okay, this is happening, um, and so I immediately know like I should size down. Or I should size up. Yep. Perfect example. So like I'm red this week. My average loss is only like fifteen, sixteen hundred. Yep. And for those who don't know, like my average loss lately has been like three or four grand. Yep. Now did I go into this week saying like I need to size down, half size down? Like no. Okay. But it just it just like it, from so much experience, like it just happened. Like I just knew how setups move. I'm like this isn't it. I'm not. I mean, again, from a motion like usually, and usually when the market's hot, I feel aggressive. It's almost like I've aligned myself. Like when the market's hot, I know this is the time to push, whether mm. I consciously know it or not. Yeah. And I will size up. When I feel mm. like now where it's just tougher, I immediately know. I'm like, mm, I don't feel emotionally. I don't have that same emotional capacity to be like, yeah, I want to risk four or five grand per trade. Yeah. I feel like I only want to risk, you know, two at most, maybe three. And I end up you know, stopping out early or I stop out sooner because I just feel off. Yep. And it, my losses end up smaller. Um, stuff like that. So, so yeah. And this, you hit it on the head too. Like risk management, what you're saying mm -hmm. in another way is so much before the trade. Oh yeah. Whereas most of us, and I'm hugely at fault at this too. Like I, I would, when I first started, I thought risk management was all about when you press, you know, buy or yeah, short, you, you know, whenever you enter the trade, mm -hmm. like everything you had planned after that. Right. But what, I, what you just Thoroughly explained, yeah. you know, really gracefully is just, it's all before too, which is huge, right? Like this, the, the well, how do you feel? You know, what are you, what state of mind are you in? Yeah. Can you trade this properly? You know, because mm -hmm. as you mentioned, like if you're not, you know, in the right state of mind and you see a great setup, you may not even trade it well. No, no, no. I've learned, I've learned the more I have prepared setup wise, risk management wise, before I even enter the trade, the better the trade goes. So some people are yes. like, common question is like, you know, maybe you have risk management down but you manage the trade poorly. You stop out too soon. Um, you emotionally exit or enter. And, and for me, it's like, if all the groundwork is laid before I take the trade. So A, I know I'm willing to risk, say, 2,500 bucks. Right. I know I'm 100% okay with losing that amount of money before yeah. I even enter the trade. Like, that's my standard loss. I can, I can take that loss hundreds of times. You've accepted that emotionally. Perfect. You now have the rear position size, like how much you're gonna lose if you yep. stop out. You know the setup. Once all this groundwork is laid out, you literally can just press the button and not worry where the stock's moving. And there'd be no emotional attachment, no emotional ties, because you've laid that emotional groundwork prior to even taking the setup. Yep. Um, and I found many times, like, if I don't take, like, perfect, like for a newer trader, many people are like, you know, how do you get over pulling the trigger of entering the trade? Well, it's like, you haven't laid that groundwork. Yep. Like, you have you, no confidence. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you know the setup? If you don't know the setup, like for me, mm. even now, if there's a stock I see and I don't know what's going I'm on. I'm not pulling that trigger. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. If I'm like, doing well, I'm not pulling that trigger. Yeah, I, I, it's like, I don't, know what you, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, I yeah. can't physically press the button to enter or exit because I, I have no idea what's going on. So one is like, do you know what the setup is? Two, many times I'll know what the setup is and I still don't pull the trigger. And I found out, it's like, I never, I never logically put a number in my head what is my size or what am I willing to lose? So if yeah. you laid that out and you, and you consciously realize, oh, if I lose this trade, it will only be 500 bucks. Yep. Can I accept that? Yeah. Then you take the trade. And it, for me, that will always, has always removed the, oh, it's popping, I should cut, or uh, like all the, you're just, just the, basically just the, the trading the plan. Yeah. At, at that point, you're yeah, just you looking just at it like, okay, plan. is it broke my plan? Nope. Nope. Stay in the trade. In. Yeah. And that takes time to get A to, lot. like in terms of, uh, Cause here's what happens to me, like mm -hmm. the same thing, but like I do feel that emotion sometimes still yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. And, but like what I've learned about it is it doesn't go away from me, but more so that I'm learning not to like react to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm like, I feel myself getting this type of way. I'm not, you know, where I'm at in my career is different from you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, 
But now I can you consciously be aware of that? Because you say you got to be truth with yourself. Like, man, I can feel myself getting kind of a little nervous here. Yeah, yeah. Like if that's happening, maybe any decision I'm making after that is not a good decision. Let me just stick to the plan. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's huge. No, man. I'm glad you said that because I, I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like I'm just this robot and want to <laughs> right, like, right. no emotions at all. You know? Yeah. Um, no, I definitely still, there's still, it, that motions of feeling nervous about if you're about to stop, like if it's like, say it's like a cent, just a yeah. penny from right. your, just, yeah, there's definitely times where like, of course I tense up. Sure. You know, that, that, I don't think that'll ever go away. Um, right. It's just learning to better cope with it and you can only better cope with it if you've, again, laid that groundwork, made that trade plan in advance. Because yeah, it, it, no one likes taking a loss as, as much as you're no. willing to accept it or not. Yeah, there's many times I'm like, my finger's on the trigger, just like waiting. Like, do I stop out? Do I not? And I'm just like sitting, I'm like watching intently. Cause like, yeah, that's, that's how, that's how I have to protect myself. Yeah. If I was too emotional or too, or sorry, too emotionless or too robotic, I might be like, ah, it's right on my stop. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Yep. You know? So there's a, there's that good middle ground of, of, of being emotional, but acknowledging it and then being able to handle it in real time. Not like stone cold cutting it off and be like, I don't know what those are, you know? So absolutely. Yeah. It, you even hit it on the head too. Like you keep on, it, it just makes sense that everything you're saying has to do with like just being here long enough mm -hmm. to be able to experience this to where you get better with it over time. Yeah. Like the emotions, like mm -hmm. you're saying, like you just get better with it, experiencing it with the trading, like over time you get better, you get more setups and, and that the core of that is like surviving. Like totally. you yeah. survived long enough to find what works for you. Yeah. And that's why I, in terms of like, when I think of survival, yes. I literally think of position sizing because the ones who can't position size correctly are the ones who take that one trade and they blow mm, up. They're yeah. out. Like you, you literally will blow up. Like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've, I've heard terrible stories and I'm like, and it's so, and I don't know whether this is like a natural tendency for me, but like when I hear that, I've been fortunate enough to be like, I've never entered I, I've, of course, trading's trading, and I've and definitely entered very tough losses and very sketchy sure. and scary moments. But when I think about it in the spectrum that you could have, and I hear stories that I've heard, I'm like, oh, I wasn't close to that. Yeah. And it's like it's all it's all relative of like what you think a blow up is. Sure. And of course, there's 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 like if you blew up, you blew up, you lost most of your account. Yes. But with the, some of the stories I hear about, I'm like, man, I wasn't that close. And in my head, in the real time, I'm like, oh, because it was going to be a huge, huge loss for me. But then you hear the stories of like, yeah, no, I can't trade anymore. I'm like, oh no, I've never been that close. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so like, no matter how conservative you are, it's, I've never seen a trade, I've never seen it necessarily hurt a trader being more conservative than being too aggressive. Like, yeah, you could be, yeah, there yeah. are times being too conservative where it actually may hurt you. Like you should have sized up more on a proper sure. setup. But I've signed, I've found, I've seen more times than not being more conservative or more being more on, the, on that side of caution will help a trader more than hurt him. Mm. You know, and th those kind of the traders I see stay in the game longer than the ones that, yep. that are, are not here anymore. And they, you know? they're even here longer just because they're not losing. You know, right. like they're just, they are able to be here long. And that's the other thing, man. Like everyone has their own track, right? Everyone mm -hmm. has their own track to race. And what's unique is like everyone like might spend longer at different levels of trading. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's different levels, right? Mm -hmm. Like the one, there's one level of like just not being scared to press a button, right? There's another level of like understanding when you are pushing sides, that feeling that you get. You know, there's just different levels to this. And a lot of people will like imagine that at one moment, Kyle, there's going to be one day where all of that goes away and I'm just pulling triggers and I'm just a killer trader and I'm not dealing with any emotions at all mm -hmm. and I'm just mm -hmm. killing it. It's just easy. Yeah. But I beg to differ. I think at every level, you're always facing those, you know, facing oh, yeah. those different struggles, but you're just aware of it and you're just constantly working on it. Yeah, totally. That's why I think trading is so amazing because... Like you said, there's different levels and right. each level is different for everybody because I truly think like you, you physically take your personality and like put it into the market. Yes. And dude, you, you like, do. you literally now have to cope with yourself. And like, I haven't found another, another skill set or another game or another like thing in life mm -hmm. that will challenge you in the way the markets will. So it's right. Cause like, for example, like me cutting losses has never been that big of an issue. Like, yeah, there's been times I've lost discipline and I've taken sure. bigger losses, but, but overall, like I've been very, very good at cutting. Some people, that's like, that's like many traders that's worst. Weakness. Yeah, that's their yeah. hardest struggle. Yes, um, dude, that's so true. For me, my biggest struggle, I think that I always, like you said, you'll never, you'll never grow it, you'll always deal with it. I think my biggest struggle is always sizing up because I can okay. do it yep. and I do do it consistently, but in coordination or in, in, in correlation to how much money I've made and how big my account is, sure. It sh my size should be like four times bigger. It yeah. really should. But I, I, I slowly try to get there because I just know for whatever reason, my personality, I'm just 
naturally more timid. That's your path. Yeah, yeah. That's just, that's just who I am in the markets, yep. you know, and I, I've, I've learned that. And that's I know so I huge that. too, because yeah. so many traders will see, everyone has a different path. Like so many traders will just see someone like, maybe they see you right now, right? Mm -hmm. Or anyone, Tim Grittani, and, and they're just like, oh, like I got to be just like that. Yeah, no, You know no, what I'm no, saying? No. Like I got to go that path. Yeah, yeah. And that's where people get frustrated. Yeah. And like really frustrated or, and make, you know, rush things. And for me, I was never had a problem with cutting losses at all, ever. Mm -hmm. But I had a problem with like sizing up. Like yeah. I would like get too timid. Mm -hmm. That was my problem. That, that was the biggest hurdle for me. Mm -hmm. So like everyone has their different hurdles. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious, is there, has there ever been like maybe someone that you've met before in the past, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe they struggle with just always cutting, man. Like they're always just cutting, but they're always saying this at the end. I'm always right. Like every time I cut, it's like it always goes my direction. Like it always goes to my price target. I just always yeah. cut too soon. Like what's what's going on? Yeah. How would you think like someone should deal with that? If I'm if I'm, I'm thinking of like if you're stopping out sure too soon or or you're stopping out consistently and then the stock ends up working right. I'm either thinking a you're you're picking the wrong stops. Like so many people like want to pick the most five cents or one percent or like, i think every strategy is different there's many strategies that are, are like that due to like if you have stats that know if a stock goes against you like five percent then you know like okay but for me i always like pick, picking a key level so almost to the point where sometimes my risk reward is like turns really bad like yeah my risk reward only might be one to one yeah but if that's the risk level i know i need to play off of for the give me the best chance of it working i still might take the trade mm -hmm. um so I think you'd have to look at like what areas are you picking to stop out at? Are you stopping out because you just don't like it? Which is valid sometimes. Sometimes with enough experience, I've learned like, yeah, I don't like it. That's, looks. that's hard to decide for though. It's very that's hard. so hard. Because there's many, there's many times where I will stop out and I'm like, yep, I was right. And the many times I'll stop out, I'm like, mm, no, I shouldn't have stopped out. Yeah. So it's, 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 you yeah, very not. acceptable. Um, but like, I'm just more saying, times than not, I wouldn't go that route. And I yeah. will only go that route the longer you've been in the game. Right. Um, but the majority of the time, like if you have a set level, you need to find whatever that key, that most key level is right. to risk, um, to give yourself the best odds to work. And then either that, or you're, like you said, you're just being emotional. Like we talked about earlier. Like if you're just stopping out to stop out yep. and it works, like, well, why'd you stop out? Like, did you, again, that, that middle ground, like, did you not like it? Or did you just get bored? Like, I can't tell you any people say I got bored. Yeah. Like, well, oh, really? You, yeah, yeah. I've heard that a lot. Like, oh, I just got bored. So like, I, I've done that, you know. I mean, it does every, happen. Whatever, a few hundred trades. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, I just got out because I was, didn't want to be here anymore. And yeah. sometimes it's okay. Like, sometimes if you generally planned on leaving for the day. But you can also make a plan to put a hard stop and just let you it could. ride out. Either you know, or, like, or. just yeah, walk yeah. away. Yeah. Because yeah. there have I mean, been trades where I plan on, like, I need, I not need to, but I like, you know what, I wanted to leave today. Yeah, true. This trade true. Didn't. And because also, a buddy calls. There's also, yeah, yeah. There's also a time stop. Some people like to do that. Like, if this setup doesn't work in this time frame, whether it only be 30 minutes an hour, then you stop out. And sometimes, yes it ends up working but if you followed your if that was part of your plan and you had a time stop then you can't hate yourself for it yeah. and maybe you need to adjust your time frame yeah, of how long you analyze think those of, later yeah, yeah yeah exactly exactly so it's it's cool that the energy i got from you whenever we started talking about just stopping out in general mm -hmm. and, and just how much energy you give towards that and it just shows like how important like yeah it's everything it's everything it's everything to even be to be in the game oh yeah so i, I love that you show that because you guys need to understand like that is literally everything. Like yeah. if you can't last long enough, none, none of that, none of those learning experiences that you're talking about can even happen. No. Uh, Do you find that a lot of newer traders like are kind of lost in, in the sauce? Say that again. Lost in the sauce. <laughs> I love that. I, I just think of that like, like you get, you get but then they get the lost in their own head about like, every day is like the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like if they don't do a good trade that day, you feel me? Oh yeah, just like totally overly. Yeah, like they just blow it out too much of a proportion. Yeah. I feel yeah. like there's a lot more of those traders out there. There's a, yeah. Um, than the ones who just blow up like at one trade. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there, there's definitely some people who, who, and I hate to say this cause, cause it's like, why isn't everyone like a professional knitter? Like why doesn't everyone knit? Passion? Really? Yeah, I don't know. I but don't yeah, know. It's, it's like just... everyone's so different that like as much as I would love that everyone can learn and know how to trade, the reality is like some people just aren't made for it. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that because most people, I got, I would think more people are made for it than they realize if they're willing to put in the work. Sure. But there are some people it's like, I, 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 I can only think of like one person that I, I never knew personally, yeah. but it was like a username in a chat room. Yep. They're like, oh my gosh, I lost $500 on my $100,000 account. Like, what am I going to do? I was like, oh, like either A, you don't, that $100,000 isn't actually yours. And right, if it is right. actually, and if, but if it is actually yours and you can't even it's willing to lose a half a percent, yeah, it's like you are just an extremely risk averse person, which is okay. But then trading isn't for you. Hmm. You know, again, it's all about self awareness. Like if you're if you're very um, down in the dumps, emotional, every day is the worst when you can't like do your best. 
I would just take a step back and be like, life isn't that serious. You know what I mean? Yep. Like we're, we're, I always think about this whenever I get down, cause everyone gets down. Everyone has ups and downs. Sure. Absolutely. Whenever I've gotten down in life, whether it be trading or just in life, I'm like, I'm just a bag of bones on a rock. <laughs> like as silly as that sounds like I don't have to, sometimes something that sometimes life doesn't have to mean like it's any, not that serious. Yeah. It doesn't have to mean, like everyone's like, what's the meaning of life? Like to get all philosophical and yeah, yeah like there's totally meaning behind that and, and making a, something out of your life. But sometimes I'm just like, to not take it so seriously, like I'm just a bag of bones. Like, yep. I'm just, I'm just on a rock. Like, yeah, you really want to tone it down. Yeah, yeah, like just, I'm just here, you yep. know? So that's a way I'm to just thankful. Down. You know, like, right. like at I'm the end of the day. I'm just alive. Yeah, you know? at the end of the day, that's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. Before we start to wrap this up though, mm -hmm. man, I, I want to ask you something. What is the main thing you're working on for yourself? Like, is there anything that you're like, as a trader where you're at now, is there mm -hmm. anything that you're like, really like, hey, I, I really want to change this about me, my, my trading, or I want to add something to my trading, or are you more on like, I'm just gonna continue to do what I'm doing. Like, which 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 path are you on right now? Um, a lot of me wants to continue to do what I'm doing for sure. I like yeah. where I where I've how how I've gone. Yeah. The part of my trading that I really want to make happen, but a part of it just time, sure. is like being that. So, so a lot of traders like you, you'll hear a lot of players like to pull, wire out money to pay sure. yourself, which I do. But like I said, in terms of how big of my accounts are and how big of my my, my biggest account is. Yes. And what I'm risking, it's like four times smaller than it should be. Okay. So you might ask yourself, well, why don't you just pull out 75% of your capital? Like if it's four times big, like why don't you just trade with the account? And so part of me, again, back to the risk manager, you know how much, because when those ideal plays do come around, mm. that's when I like literally want to take is not as much size as possible, but I need that bigger account yep. to, to throw around like a six figure position. Like it's like, it's no big deal. Yep. If I only have say a hundred thousand dollar account, like I can't do that when that time comes. So the part of my trading that I really would like to progress, but can't in terms of time, because like I can't just get an ideal A plus setup tomorrow. You like, can't make it happen. Yeah, yeah, and, they, and sometimes they only happen once a month or a couple times a year. So practice takes a while. Yeah, yeah, but when they do happen, it's like those are the ones that can like literally make your year. I mean, really, mm -hmm. if you if you really wanted to be the trader yeah. that only trades once a year and like just lives off that, I mean, you could, you really could just find that one trade. But you need a big account and you need to be able to bet a lot of size. So the part of me that wants to continue to grow is like build that account up to where when I find and I get those those A plus setups, I can take Slam it. three, four, five X risk yep. and then make six. Hopefully, I mean, I don't, who knows? I know traders make seven figures, but like yep. you, you need a multi-figure, seven figure account to probably do that. And so yep. like, that's kind of maybe the, the five, 10 year plan for me was like where I can just, cause again, someone, I'm only 26, but like when I become, when I have a family, part of me, doesn't want to be as risk taking on as I normally am. Yeah. As, as risk averse as I already am, there's a part of me like would want to step away from trading and not rely on that solely yes, as income. So like if I got to the point where it's like, yeah, I took this one trade, made a whole year's worth of income, far like they say like seven figures, just yeah. million, I made yeah. a million. Then I could just I could just stop that day. I could just stop. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's wait part of me is yeah. that's kind of like the the big you know peak that so I would what like. What about to, swing trading or nothing like that? Um, I mean, I do have, if I have a swing trade, it's usually I have like, the only way I can swing trade comfortably is if I have like no stop loss. It's like, I'm really, I'm, my position size is solely to risk zero. Okay. So I just don't look. Gotcha. Like, okay. It's just let it go. You know? Yeah. yeah. I could probably, okay. I could be more maybe strategical and be like, I want to risk X percentage or X amount of. Right. Like, like day trading. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for me, I, I love. It's not your focus. Yeah. yeah. I, I love the, just like, if it's cool, a long, man. if it's truly like a swing or a longer term thing for me. It's like risk zero, don't look at it. Gotcha. That's how I like to do it. Yeah. Well, look, so. man, let people know where they can find you if they have any questions. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure people are going to be like, yo, like, you didn't even ask this. They want to ask you something. So yeah. if you can let them know, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Um, Twitter's the best spot at Trader Kyle C. I don't, unfortunately, when, I, when people reach out to me earlier on, it was easy because I didn't get as many DMs. I only get a lot. Yeah. So if I don't get it to you, I'm sorry. Like, just keep being persistent. I'll eventually see it. Um, YouTube, I, I make monthly recaps of my trades. Um, didn't do one in November, just taking a break, but I will make one at the end of December um, for the full like 2021 recap. Post my trades on Profitly, you can go to Profitly there. Um, also, if you're part of, or have heard of Stock to Trades, um, me and Jack Kellogg, we have a, a room there, a little community we build, or like to build and, and, and work off of. We learn our trades, we teach people there, do some webinars, um, do you check that out as well. That's pretty much the, the main places you can find me. Yeah. Cool, well look man, so, hey, I appreciate you being on the show, brother. Yeah. It's always a pleasure, yeah, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Take care, Appreciate man. it, appreciate it.